Good morning, staff. Good to have you all here. Everybody's bright-eyed and bushy-tailed this morning. That fall back, everybody got an extra hour of sleep, so everybody woke up an extra hour earlier, right? I know my house was bustling earlier than normal this morning, so everybody's internal clock got them up and running. I do appreciate you being here, though, early, and uh, this morning, we're going to talk just for a few minutes as our, on our pep, uh, on attitude. We talk about this, you know, it's on our list over and over and over. And uh, just reminds you as far as the attitude of our church, we absolutely do not believe that church is a competitive contact sport. Amen. We don't believe that in the least. Uh, we're not here to uh, cause a problem for any other church in the community or accept trouble from anywhere else. We absolutely believe that we're all on the same team. We're all striving for souls, and uh, as long as there's not heresy going on, uh, whatever they're doing, that's their business. What we're doing is our business. We're not in a com competition at all. Amen. So with that said, if we have somebody coming from another church and they're coming over here, we're going to love them when they get here. If they decide to turn around and go right back where they, where they came from, we're going to love them as they go. Right. We're not in competition. We love the sheep that come. Uh, Lord showed me a long time ago, whoever shows up in this house this morning is our sheep for the day. When they walk out their door, they're his sheep. Amen. We're going to love them when they're here. Love them going. Love them everywhere in between. Also on that this morning, uh, talking about attitude. Uh, and, you know, you wish you didn't have to talk about this stuff. But in the Christian world, we do. Remember, there should absolutely be no gossip inside the body of Christ. Always be positive. People need to be able to trust us with their hearts. So we need to operate, especially as staff. If somebody's coming and talking to you about something, operate in reverse form. A lot of times if somebody tells us something, unless they say, don't tell anybody, we think it's fair game to talk about. But especially as staff, we need to operate in reverse. If somebody comes and talks to me about something, I need to assume that that is private and is for no one else's ears but mine and theirs. Unless they specifically say it's okay to talk about it. If we'll operate in reverse like that, a lot of times people uh, will, will not have their feelings hurt near as bad. Do not allow your mouth to cause your flesh to sin. That's what the scripture says. Do not allow your mouth to cause your flesh to sin. And really, if you go look, um, I'm going to guess a venture 90% of the people who are sitting at home today that will not attend a church because their feelings were hurt, their feelings were hurt by words. Somebody's loose tongue. Somebody's mouth caused their flesh to sin. Someone else got wounded. And whether it's right or wrong, they're sitting at home today and they will not attend a church. So be very careful with our mouth this morning. Be complimentary. Be uplifting. Be encouraging if all possible. Remember the scripture teaches us this principle. It doesn't say these exact words, but it teaches us this principle. It is the glory of a king to conceal a matter. If, if Larry and I have had a run-in of some kind this past week... It is actually my glory to be able to conceal that. I don't need to run around and tell Gary and tell Rebecca and tell everybody that Larry and I had to run in and drag them through the mud of that thing. It's actually the glory of a king to just let that be between Larry and I and just go on. Amen. And so always, as far as attitude, keep that in mind. Remember that we are not here to judge any of God's servants. We want to allow God to minister to them, to convict them, to encourage them. That's his job, not mine. And as long as I am on that topic, also remember that moat hunting is illegal in the kingdom of God. Think about that. Moat hunting is against the law in the kingdom of God. We're not, that's, uh, it's never in season to be moat hunting. And I just need to accept the fact that I'm on a journey in the kingdom of God, and so is Ashley. And God's going to take care of Ashley going through that journey. He's going to take care of me going through that journey, and we're not going to be judgmental. Also, as far as attitude, as this church does a great job of this. Let's be intergenerational aware. Amen. Remember, we got young lions learning to roar. we got medium lions learning to roar. We've got great big lions still learning to roar, right? 
And so in that, let's be intergenerationally aware. Encourage our youth to get involved. Encourage our children's church to get involved. It thrills my heart to see our five, six, seven-year-olds around these altars worshiping with everything that's within them. And what even thrills my heart even more is when they're standing by somebody that's maybe a, a double ARP member and they're standing right there side by side worshiping around the same altars. And you see this nine-year-old praying for somebody that's maybe 60 or 70 years old. And then you see that 60 or 70-year-old blessed in that and then turning around and praying for that youth. That's being intergenerationally aware. And so let's be sure that we do that always. Be helpful, be encouraging, be uplifting, and in all of that, God will receive the glory, especially as, as our staff as we come together in doing that. Now, let me encourage you with this word, my heroes of faith and my soldiers well armed. I'm going to make an admission, uh, a, 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 I guess a little bit of a confession this morning. Um, this past Wednesday night after church, I got home and uh, the TV was on. Linda wasn't watching. She was just moving around the house. And, uh, but it was on and there's a new series that was just, I, I think it's new. Seal Team, anybody watch that? that new, I think it's a new series that maybe that's just coming on. And it was on, so I plopped down and was watching that. And I discovered something that I had been aware of a long time ago but never thought much about recently. While I was watching that, it really did a good job of showing that those seals, when they're not out there doing what seals do, they've got wives, they've got children, they've got homes, they've got bills to pay, they've got situations and circumstances. And back a while back, I read a book called All Things Are Possible about great, the great evangelist, healing evangelist of the early century here, uh, A.A. Allen and uh, Catherine Kuhlman and Jack Cole and those guys. And in that book, he did a great job of pre presenting those guys as human. Those guys had wives, they had homes, they had difficulties, they had children that got sick and died. I mean, they, they had car payments and breakdowns. I mean, they had everything that we have. But I want to remind you something. When those seals, when their little phone goes off and they jump in their truck and they go to the base and they get on that airplane with their pack on their back, they are 100% a seal. Everything at home stops. And it doesn't matter if there's a car payment due. It doesn't matter if the washing machine's running over and flooding the, the utility room. None of that matters. They get on that airplane, they go, <laughs> and they are 100% a soldier when they get on that plane to leave. Amen. And I want to remind you for those guys that were the great healing evangelists early on of this century, A.A. Allen and all those guys, they had jobs, they had wives, they had children, they had... Uh, great tragedies sometimes in their lives. But when they walked into a situation where it was time to minister, everything else went completely into the background. They walked in as soldiers, well-armed, member ministers, heroes of faith for that generation. And they were 100% a warrior when they walked in on that stage. I call each and every one of you all the time heroes of faith, soldiers well-armed. And I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt, my staff, you are heroes of faith for this generation. And I don't even have to read it to you to remind you of this. The scripture in Ephesians chapter 6 says, You have on the armor of God. And I'll just quote it without having to read it to take the time. But you've got a helmet of salvation, a blessed plate of righteousness, feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, loins girt about with truth. You have a shield of faith and a sword in your hand. Right? Come on. Amen. That's who you are. You're heroes of faith. But I want to remind you something this morning. Your armor always covers your humanity. Your armor, my soldiers, my heroes of faith that have shown up for battle this day, your armor will always cover your humanity. And remind you also, your humanity will never cover your armor. It's not designed to work that way. If your humanity is overcoming your armor, what that tells me is your enemy has come along and he has convinced you to remove your armor and lay it aside because your humanity has overpowered your glory. That's a lie from the enemy. Listen to me. When you got up this morning and you shook yourself, you were a giant of faith. You were a soldier well armed. And when you put on your armor of God and you stepped out of your house and you walked into this auditorium and walked in here as staff, you walked in here with your humanity covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, by His grace, you are covered from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet with the armor of God. You are soldiers well armed. You are powerful. You are strong. You are filled with faith. And your humanity will not stop your ministry in this house today. So get ready. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. God has always used what looks weak in the flesh to rot great spiritual victory. Come on. Ask David. Yeah. And then go talk to Goliath. Yeah. 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 Right. 
does not harm God in any instance for us to be human. But I'll guarantee you it glorifies Christ. For us to operate in the power of His glory in our humanity covered by grace and armed with the armor of God. It will glorify Him. So today, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, my heroes of faith. Today there's great victory to be won. Let's circle up and pray over the service.